Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Reagan and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to reach out to you and ask you if you could subscribe to the channel by clicking on the button below because that's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. And today I'm going to continue the procedural generation implementation that we started previously. We're going to be looking at refactoring how I assign materials. I think it's creating way too many materials. We can trim down that implementation and do it in a different way that it's going to be more performance. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you a couple more things that I added to the procedural generator script that we're working on. So right now you can tell that if I go into a grid that I have a few more options. So we, I was doing a procedural materials and it was basically a Boolean. And every time we set it to true, it was basically generating how many as many shapes as I have as materials. So if I had 100 shapes, it was generating 100 materials. And I think that was just too much. I don't think I need that diversity on materials. And what I ended up doing is actually adding a count. So if I set the count to one, it's gonna generate just one random material. If I change the count to 100, it'll generate 100 materials and so on. So the other thing that I also added, I had a default material that you could set in it was only it was only one so instead of doing that what i what i added was basically an array of default materials where you can specify the size so if i select three materials that are going to be the defaults basically i randomly pick one of those when i'm going through the the generation so right now if i go in for instance if i regenerate everything and because the procedural material count is set to zero the, then the default material is the one that gets used. So right now there are three materials that I'm using in this procedural generator. So, and why did I do that? It's because for performance. So I don't have to create the materials at runtime. I don't have to, also I don't have to create 120 materials at runtime. I only have to use the three and basically randomly pick one. So, so you can see it's performing a lot better and and also I don't have, you know, it's not creating as many. So I can go and change the height. This is another thing that I did is I also added a change event. Basically I checked the previous value versus the current value. If they are different, then I, gen I regenerate the grid. So I can also do that with, you know, if I change the height, that's another thing that I added. If I change the height, I, ch I regenerate the grid. And, and this is cool because it gives me more flexibility as far as like, I wanna see the simulation even if I change just one value, because that allows me to you know, determine what kind of changes I need to make. And of course, when we start looking at adding roads and, and other like street lights and things like that, we're gonna need to have a lot of flexibility. So, so that's pretty much this piece. And so let me show you how the code looks like. So you have an idea of what changes I made. So I'm gonna go and jump back into Visual Studio Code. So like I was saying, I have previous width, previous height, and for most of these properties that are exposed because if somebody changes the width, I want to track what the previous width was and then do the comparison. So I have that set for each one of these, the shape width, the shape height, also the shape depth. The, the other thing that I did in addition to adding, you know, previous floats to track changes, I also started the range at a lower number because if you change the width, and what I want to do is I don't want to go all the way to 100. I think it was just too much on the height and the width and the depth. So what I did is I started at 0 0.1 in the, you know, as a flow. And then that allows me to easily see changes and not go way too big. That is, you know, it's, it's not going to be something that it's going to ever be that big, at least for what we're working on. So all of these ones are starting at 0 0.1. And then also the max is, is changed to 20. If you think that you need to go higher than 20, then you know you can go ahead and change that number. And and basically what will happen is the slider will now you know have a max of 20. So that is that change. The the other thing that I added that was changed, and I could show you by even going to you know the changes on source control. Let me go ahead and, and show you that. Is if you if you go down and scroll down to that area, we can look at specifically this area. So let me go ahead and collapse this. So you can see the procedural materials to generate now it's an integer 
and it has a count. And this is what I was telling you about in the, you know, when I was showing you in Unity. It used to be a Boolean, so now that was changed and it was renamed to something else. So now this determines how many materials were going to be generated randomly. Then the other thing is I also wanted to track that because I want to be able to change the value in real time and see those changes. So I also added a previous procedural materials to generate. Then I have my array of procedural materials. So this is used for, you know, if I set it to three, I need to create an array of, you know, index of size of three. And then I store three materials in that array. This one is used for if somebody goes in and manually assigns those materials. So these are the cases that if you create materials that are already, you know, in Unity and pretty fine, you can associate it through the inspector. Where these ones are more procedurally, they're, they're randomly created. So the other things that I do, that's basically what the most of, most of the bulk of the work is in getting that, you know, set up. And then on the on the start method is when I start creating the array. So I create a procedural materials array, and then I clear, created a size of you know what variable whatever they set in the inspector for procedural materials to generate. Then one thing that I that I check to make sure that I that I create materials only when only when the procedural materials to generate is greater than zero. If that is set to zero, I'm going to use the default materials. So what I'm saying is if you know if somebody wants to create procedural materials and they set it to a number more than zero. And we haven't we haven't associated the manual materials, the default materials in the in the inspector, then we go ahead and create the materials, you know, randomly. And we only create as many as we, you know, of the person that it's setting up a level desire. So if we go down, that's basically that piece. And then this is the part that associates the materials to, you know, as we create a mesh. In this case, we're creating cubes. We are generating a mesh. Once we create a mesh, we get the render because we associated it in here. We created a new component of type mesh render. So we get the render and then we use the property material. Then what we do is we check, okay, if procedural materials is greater than length, we know that we somebody requests the procedural materials and also making sure that default materials is equal to zero because I want this to take precedence. I want this to, if the default materials is set, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to associate the materials to the renderer. Otherwise, otherwise I do. And what I do, I do a random range. I go from zero to the amount of materials that were requested, minus one because this is index zero. And I do the same thing with the, you know, which cases where they set the default materials. If the full material is greater than zero and the procedural materials it was set to zero, then I use the default materials that the person that is designing the level designated. So I hope that it's not as confusing. It's just a way to toggle between the two. And then this is basically just adding additional properties. I, I still need to refactor this. I'm gonna refactor this and add it to maybe even like an extension method or another method where we can just check if they're if there are changes, if there are changes, then we get into this if statement. But for now, I think I think this works. And I'm basically setting the previews, I'm setting the previews shape width, because now we have the control of changing that. And then when it changes it, we execute this, basically the if statement here. And then if we make changes, I want, I want previews to have the new value, previews to have the new shape height, and then so on, and then regenerate the grid. So the other thing that I added to this is the is a new method. So if you notice, I have, let me go back up. I not only have an extension method down here where I'm saying, let me, let me find that one. So let me go up. So I used to have, just go back down. Okay, here we go. So I used to have an extension method. And I still have it just in case that extends the mesh render and it basically it's called apply random material and this is the one that for every iteration it creates a random material so instead of doing that what i did is i added another another method that is not an extension method but it's a static method inside of that same extension class and, and the way that it works is you tell it okay this is the shader name that you're going to use this is how many random materials i want to create so and then i create a material array I loop through each one of the indexes in the array up to the count. 
then I create a material just like I did on the extension method. I'm going through basically if I say three, this is going to iterate three times and therefore create three different random materials for me and then return an array, which is what I'm using right at the top where we are calling, where we are generating the materials that are random. So that's how that, that piece works. So let me go back in, go into Unity and let's say that we wanted to do, let's set this to zero and let's create a hat, let's see, maybe, maybe 10. 10 is fine, 10 procedural materials and we hit play. And you can see that we're now generating 10 procedural materials. And the other option that we can do now, if we set this to zero, and let's say that we set this back to three, I go into my project, look at materials, and then assign material, default material one, two, and three. And now hit play, and we can see that it should now use the default materials. There we go. Instead of the materials that I'm telling it to generate randomly. So this is really helpful because like I was saying, we can, you know, allow somebody to define these and create these. And at the same time, if we want to, you know, we don't want to wait for the person that is creating the materials, we can generate them procedurally in the meantime and then see the changes. And then when they're ready, we can toggle back to default materials. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources and tutorials for game developers. If you are starting out, if you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. Also, find me in Patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you, guys.